Well, hello there. Welcome back to the Black Widow. I can't believe we still haven't finished this. So today, as before, I want to keep working on this same composition without trying completely restarting it. We started this version like this and then progressed to this point. I think this is a little bit of a progress that you guys haven't seen because I didn't release that episode, worked around everything, adding more, more and more and more kids, straightening things up and whatever. So in the previous video about that cool Eastern digital art tutorial I found, so many of you guys asked if I'll work on Black Widow again using tips from that tutorial. I'll try to do that. I don't want to restart completely, but if we'll end up having to do that, then yeah, we'll pretty much do all kinds of different types of sketches. It's gonna take a while and I don't know how that will work out. Right now, I want to try to do one interesting thing. I was analyzing a bit my, I want to say, main reference for Black Widow. This artwork by Piotr Jeptonski. This is this cool concept artist that worked on concepts for Dishonored 2 and I believe this is one of the concepts for that game. And it's really close in nature, in style, to what we're going for in Black Widow. But of course I ended up experimenting a lot with all kinds of stuff, so yeah, the feeling in the artwork was varying quite a lot. But I was looking at this artwork and I was trying to think of like, why does it look just cooler, you know? And I think the main reason comes naturally from the fact that Pyotr Jeptonski works from black and white and then colorizes in separate layers. And Livia Prima in her tutorial that I talked about in the previous video also does that. And I feel like it gives you a certain level of freedom Although also taking a lot of it away, because generally I'm an advocate for painting in color right away. I want to try to follow this kind of technique all the way, using only dry brushes, meaning not using the blending brushes, the ones that actually stretch colors around. Because that brings a very different feel, removes certain sharpness from the brushwork, for instance, this artwork on the right would look very different if it would be painted with that kind of blending brush. So I'm gonna switch to something much simpler than that. Maybe even start with just a simple round brush. Because in the end of the day, that's the best brush, let's be honest. And also another thing that I want to do a lot, so I'm switching to black and white and I'll be working in black and white on this composition. But another thing, one of you guys said in the comments, the problem with this composition is that it has no breathing room. I need to try something that I actually almost never try and it seems like a good idea. I need to make this picture either taller or wider, like noticeably wider, so we would be like, while we're still close to the character, to the Black Widow, she takes up the full height of the picture, we still have something on the sides to see the room, the, the huge amount of kids, because this right here, this cut that we have in here, really feels like the picture initially was a lot bigger, and then it was just cropped like this. Kids are just squeezed into the picture. So I'm gonna do these two things. Switch to black and white, widen the picture quite a lot, and then keep searching, really working with the contrast, because really this picture is black and white by its nature. All the objects in the room, all the characters, are black and white. And just working with black and white base and then adding subtle colorization in a separate layer will let us work with a much more subtle and precise color grading in a way. And that's a great way to achieve these cool stylish tones that Pyotr Jeptonski's artwork really benefits from. Anyway, let's start.
So, feeling pretty cool so far. I know, there's something to it when you're working with what feels like a black and white photo. Just gives this horror manga black metal feel to it. I don't know, I'm a huge sucker for that. Never thought of the idea that actually changing your workflow, like for instance giving up working with color right away and switching to black and white, may be actually beneficial for certain stories. Like if you're working on something that's supposed to be dreadful and dark, horrific, then it may be a much better idea because you're not gonna get a lot of colorful objects in here. Like the contrast and the composition won't depend on color. So why bother? Better focus on the contrast that is everything for horror. Well, for this kind of generic horror. If you would watch a movie like Midsommar, I don't know how they pronounce it, Midsommar, that movie is a horror movie, but a very unique one. <laughs> but it's like intentional. Mostly horror looks the way it should look like. More of a dark, high contrast, pale gamma. I just, I never thought of an idea that I don't have to choose a team of black and whiters or full colorers. It's just tools. And in many cases, there's a good reason to go back and forth. I mean, it doesn't mean that this artwork will work out at all. Oh god, I keep forgetting she's pregnant. That's so messed up. Like it brings everything together. How she's, uh, she's the mother. Oh yeah, another thing that I had a thought about recently, and I thought it was a really cool idea that will improve my workflow greatly, but right now in practice I don't really find a lot of usage to it, probably because I'm not starting from scratch. And the point is, whenever you're building shapes with these spots, black and white or colorful, doesn't really matter, but pretty much never put flat spots on the canvas. Like you're marking in a head and I did this, right? Well, I shouldn't. I think I should have done like more like this. The point is, there is always a place for a gradient. And that's a great way to mark in the basic spots on your image and bringing it one step further right away by showing the direction of the lighting on all the objects and showing the level of contrast on each object. Right now you can see I'm adding this gradient on the probably hypothetical black hat of a kid. And I'm adding this gradient, it's super subtle, like the colors are so close. And that's the point. I will know that this is as far as it goes. This is all the contrast I can afford on a black head. It's really black, so it's not gonna be getting much brighter, even at the brightest spot. And with the sky right here, I decided to open this window. I think it will be a good place to have some kind of a marker, like a special place. A secondary point in the composition. And even here, I decided, no, I won't be using just a flat rectangle of a sky, I'll add a little bit of a gradient, but I made sure it's super subtle.
I feel like their hairstyles are a bit too generic. They almost look like normal hair, just a school kid, you know? I feel like they should be like greasy, really stuck to the surface of the head. Because it doesn't really... They feel too default and not applied with that kind of hairstyle. Does it make sense? I hope it does. Like a little bit meaningful grotesque in this case will really work, I think. And yeah, these gradients I've been talking about, they need to be pretty much applied on every level. So I mentioned the small little parts, right? Here, here, on this kit I also added it and I'll be continuing doing that everywhere. But also, this kind of gradient also makes sense a lot. It's not so much about the physics of the lighting here, although obviously we're perfectly applying it together. The windows are over there, so the further we go away from them, the darker it gets on this side. But I'm using this physics as a convenient place to apply the gradient, because we love looking at gradients. Gradients mean rich image. And it means we're not looking at something that is flat, repetitive. Because at the very least, things go darker from top to bottom. That's a great base. Alright, this is pretty cool. I don't know about you guys, but I think this is uh, a noticeable improvement. How do I compare? <laughs> it's kind of hard to compare because you look at the old version and it feels like I just need to zoom in because it's just cropped very awkwardly. Maybe I should avoid doing the same, the same mistake in here. Like this head shouldn't be so close to the edge of the picture. I feel like the perspective on this guy should be, uh, like, stronger. Yeah, like that. Fixing aerial perspective a little bit. All of these really dark spots in the back. They shouldn't be darker than this particular dark gray color. So I just used the lighten mode in a separate layer and just painted over all these too dark of a spots with a lighter gray and it fixed up all of it <laughs> yeah like the proportions of the canvas such a huge thing here um i guess i'm gonna leave this here for today i want to start light because of course i'm not in a good shape right now <laughs> not just with painting like i'm rusty but also with making painting videos it's you gotta get into the rhythm so yeah tell me guys what you think uh, in the future, I'm planning to really work on this area. I think I said that before on this composition in previous episodes, but yeah, I really feel like playing around with something that Livia Prima also reminded me of. This cool technique of using loose and sharp edges where they're beneficial. When you're working on such a huge mess of characters, it's really important to decide on where you want to lose details, lose those edges. So I'm gonna assume I'm, I'm gonna have a lot of sharp edges of dark heads and white shoulders and lose a lot of details of anything that goes below. For now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll read your comments. 
Until next time, bye! I really like going for a much brighter spot of the face and hands on the widow, like really segregating her as she's such a pale queen. This is something I wanted initially, but when you're working with colors and everything, you feel like... I don't know what you feel like, but I hope this will survive future colorization.